Hi guys, today we're going to review Kiro 400 by Film Never Die. Let's get started. Hi guys, so um, like I said, the film we're going to review today is Kiro by Film Never Die. Um, it's a 400 ISO color negative film um, and there's 27 exposures on this which is straight away a um, really weird one for me I've never seen 27 exposures I've seen um, 36 and 24 but never 27 Kiro I believe means yellow in Japan that goes well with the lovely artwork um, on this packaging um, the packaging alone I'm definitely going to keep it's really really nice to look at and the actual canister itself um, has the same artwork on it. Now what's nice about this, it actually comes with a little keyring loop. So on the canister there's actually a little hole um, where you can put the loop through and you can keep this as a keyring. Which is why I was very careful when I shot this and was winding it back that I didn't pull this the whole way through because I still don't have a... Um, tool for pulling the film back out. I've only ever seen um, a couple of um, example shots from this. Let's get it into the film tank and I'll see you all when they're developed. Okay guys, so We've finished our development, so what I'll do is I'll get these hung up and we can take a look. Thought I'd also show you how to turn this lovely canister into a keyring. You should be able to see a small hole. Um, just around here. So what you might need is just a little pin, so I'm just using one of my wife's earrings. So if you can push it through with the um, pin or whatever you have, you can then kind of reach in and pull it up through here. There we go. And then what you want to do is just pass the key ring in through the loop. And you just tighten it like that. And then you have a lovely key ring. So the hardest bit guys is getting this thread through that hole there, but if you can get a pin, it shouldn't be a problem. I'll wait for these to dry and then I'll scan them up and luckily you don't have the weight, so here they are guys. from the roll. A couple of things that I like particularly are the reds and the greens that come out in this um, and you can see in Hannah's jumper and also um, particularly in the pictures of the orchids the greens are just very vibrant for me. Um, what I, you might notice as well is there's a few watermarks still and um, like last the last roll of film that I developed with the cine still I still think it has to do with the stabilizer and um, I even tried adding a drop of photo flow in with it this time and I'm still getting quite a few watermarks um, I've never had that happen with any of the rolls I've developed um, in black and white so um, if you've had any experience with this um, leave me a comment below 
One thing I would note about this film, if you are developing at home, just watch because the film, when it dries, is very curly. Um, none of the films that I have developed to date have been that curly. Like when I was um, loading it into the uh, holder for scanning, it just curled right back up. Um, so it was a bit difficult. Um, I think that's why some of the images had quite a few bits of dust um, and scratches just from me trying to load it into the um, holder. So overall I'm quite happy with um, uh, the Kiro 400. I definitely would um, recommend having a go with it. Um, if you'd like to buy it um, I'd highly recommend ordering it from Analog Wonderland, which is where I get all my film from. Um, they're very good prices and they're very helpful if you um, need to get in contact with them. They also have their own YouTube channel as well that has lots of information about the films they sell and any events that are coming up and I'll leave a link to their channel down below. So that's everything for today guys. If you liked the episode, give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel and you want to see more of the content here. We'll see you again on another episode. Bye guys.